Hello, I'm Anthony Hughes, and this is my roundup of new features found in Dorico 5. Stage and space templates give you an easy visual way to arrange your ensemble on a virtual stage, deciding where each player should be positioned and creating different spaces in which they can perform. Dorico automatically translates this information into pan and reverb settings, so it's easy to emulate a chamber group playing in a small recital room or a large orchestra playing in a concert hall. Pitch contour emphasis helps melodies play back more expressively and with a human touch by analyzing melodic lines in your music and emulating the natural performance trait of playing higher notes ever so slightly louder. The effect is subtle so as not to sound overcooked and Dorico switches it on by default in new projects. So without you having to do anything, your project's playback will sound more realistic. Dorico 5 ships with Groove Agent SE the entry-level version of Steinberg's creative drum software, and includes a version of The Kit, an acoustic drum kit recorded in Berlin's Teldex Studios, including its classic reverb chamber and a choice of two mic positions. You can use Groove Agent to play back drum tracks in your Dorico projects and also make use of its extensive library of drum patterns, which you can drag directly into Dorico or trigger using Dorico 5's new MIDI trigger regions. Trigger regions are designed to play a note or chord that doesn't appear in the score, so are perfect for triggering patterns from software such as Groove Agent or Steinberg's T Guitar. You can now drag notes in right mode to edit both their pitch and rhythmic position. And creating multiple items at the same time has become much easier and more intuitive. Scrub Playback lets you scrub your mouse pointer over the score to hear exactly what's playing at that moment in your music, with handy key commands and the ability to solo instruments. Make changes to the instruments in your score or create your own instruments or new transpositions of existing instruments using the new instrument editor. We've also added a whole host of notation and workflow improvements that I'm going to run through with you now. You're going to love this one to start with. Now you can double tap the note duration key commands to get a dotted note. For example, by double tapping the sixth key, I can quickly input a dotted quarter note, meaning there's far less jumping around the computer and keyboard when in note input. If you type three dots after crash or dim in the dynamics popover, it will now create a crescendo or diminuendo with a line covering the duration of your selection. There's better control over the appearance of niente dynamics. Scale the size of the niente circle and set a gap after the hairpin if required, or control the font if using the niente N option. There are a host of new default baroque and classical ornaments available in the ornaments panel. A new command allows you to delete bars included in your selection. You can summon this easily from the jump bar or set a key command. I've configured command backspace on my Mac, but you can choose a key command that's useful to you. Conversely, you can set a key command to add a bar to the end of the flow. You can now choose to hide clefs and octave lines on a per layout basis, so you can make a conductor's score more compact and easier to read while keeping the instrumentalist's part how they would expect to read it. There's a new option to group notes, beam groups and rests in 2-2 and cut common time using the rules for 4-4 four -four or common time. It's now possible to automatically align rests in the same voice vertically. Let's look at chord symbols. When chord diagrams are shown at the start of a flow, they now display using better geometry so that their chord symbols are taken into account and they fit well within the bounds of the automatic frame. There's more flexibility to the options regarding chord symbol alignment. We've added an option for how to align chord symbols with altered bass notes. You can choose to align other chord symbols to the top, middle or bottom of such items. And you can opt to vertically align the transposed capo chord symbols to the left or center. You can now scale the height of parentheses around chord symbols so that they work better with the slash before an altered bass note. And there's more control available for the appearance of 6-9 chords, so when there are additional alterations, such as a sharpened 11th, the chord symbol will still show the 6-9 together, as opposed to grouping the 9th with the 11th. Some great features all about text now. You're able to set a color for the background and border of text frames, allowing you more creative freedom with your layouts. You can quickly change the paragraph style for text items. And now select more will select only other text items that use the same paragraph style. We've added the ability to set the leading when editing text. 
and it's now easy to input any arbitrary Unicode symbol. Simply input the code point, type Alt X, and Dorico will convert it to the Unicode symbol. Looking at some new project setup features now, Dorico 5 installs a further eight music font families for you to use immediately. These families are all released under the same SIL open font license as Dorico's default music fonts. Simply double-click one in the music fonts dialog to use it. There's a new renumber instruments command, useful for when you have added or reordered instruments of the same type, and their number sequence is no longer in the desired order. Now, when you are using player names instead of instrument names as staff labels, you can choose to do this on the first system only. And Dorico will now remember the default number of bars for new projects between sessions. Over to engrave mode, the frame fullness indicator is now over here on the left to help distinguish it from the system fullness indicators over there on the right. Using the note spacing tool, voice column handles remain visible when an adjustment has been made. Some great playback improvements. Double click the ruler in the key editor or track view to start playback from that point. And if you'd rather the current window did not follow the score during playback, you can now switch this off in the status bar and you can set this independently for each window. When suppressing playback for an item, you can choose to do this only for specific passes, thereby making it possible to play back certain notes, dynamics and so on, on a particular pass through a repeated section. Dorico can now play back microtonal pitches using MIDI pitch bend. While this does have some disadvantages, for example, it does not work per note, so it will affect all notes in a chord. It means you can produce monophonic microtonal playback for plugins that don't support it natively, and the pitch bend messages are exported alongside MIDI so that your DAW or other application can use them too. Opt in to MIDI pitch bend for microtonal playback using the control in the Expression Map Editor. We all love standardization and the variation it so often brings. In the world of MIDI, there are three often used conventions by software and hardware manufacturers for describing Note 60 that we all call middle C. C3, C4, or C5. Dorico follows the international pitch notation standard by default, describing middle C as C4, but we've added a control to preferences that lets you choose, and this might make it easier when working with various VST instruments and sound libraries, including Groove Agent SE that ships with Dorico. The setting here affects octave numbering throughout the application. You can now rename mix channels, particularly useful when setting up effects channels. It's now possible to specify a delay in milliseconds for each switch in an expression map that adjusts the start position of notes in order to accommodate sounds with a slower tack or rise time. Make notes sound earlier than written by entering a negative number here. Each individual instrument of a percussion kit now appears as a separate track in play mode, allowing you to route each instrument individually using the track inspector. And finally, we've enhanced Music XML import and export. We import many more music items, ranging from holds and pauses, natural and artificial harmonics, many more playing techniques and many types of ornaments, as well as improvements to voice direction in grand staff instruments and the handling of transpositions in staff labels. Music XML export has also been improved with page and staff size values, basic page margins and system and page breaks. Dorico also exports a number of different note head types and the names of the music font and main text font used in the project. And that's my roundup of the features new to Dorico 5. You can read the full list in the version history found on our website or in the Dorico section of the Steinberg Download Assistant. I've made separate videos that go into more detail for all our headline new features, so do be sure to check those out. And please do consider liking this video and subscribing to our channel to be notified of all our new content. I'm Anthony Hughes, thanks for watching.